by AT&T. By Q from Quaker State. By Infinity. And by Geico. That 8th Street Bridge might be a little slick in spots tonight as the temperature plummets to the low 20s here in Knoxville. However, the home team has been uh, playing at a hot pace. On the verge of taking their sixth consecutive victory. Their only loss at Rupp Arena to Kentucky. On the verge of going 9-1 and one in SEC play as Hill shoots an air ball from the free throw line. Tennessee hitting 56% from the floor in the second half and holding Arkansas to 27% shooting. Jordan Howell is called for the uh, Tennessee foul. Tennessee will go to Athens to play Georgia on Saturday. Some of you will see that game. I will. I will. <laughs> Arkansas has a big test against Mississippi State in Starkville. Arkansas in Fayetteville beat Mississippi State handily, but the Bulldogs still have the edge in the SEC West race. In the loss column, they're dead even. Mississippi State seven and two right now. Arkansas six and two, and they're ready to become six and three. And apparently this will snap the Arkansas four game winning streak as Howell misses and Washington with the board. Ten rebounds now for Michael Washington. Three minutes left in this one from Thompson Bowling. You know, every year about this time, you and I start discussing the teams that are really uh, ready to get ready to go into NCAA tournament play. I don't know if there's any doubt there are two locks right now, and they're both from the state of Tennessee, and that's Vanderbilt and Tennessee. Some other teams still trying to battle their way in there. I think Florida still has an outside chance, certainly Mississippi State and Arkansas, too. Juwan Smith, by the way, a nice hand as he left the game, having scored a career high equaling 32 on 9 of 13 shooting, 6 for 6 from the three-point arc. It was interesting what the NCAA committee said uh, yesterday that they were going to really look at the last 12 games of the year, see how teams are playing at the end uh, as to whether or not they were going to include them in that tournament. That that was going to become something that they were going to favor. How you finish the season. Eight to shoot, seven. Chisholm's three pointer. Back rim into the arms of Towns. Hunter in some deep trouble, got it to Urban. Welch misses a three. Well, Tennessee is taking over the rebounding lead now. Howell missed a layup. Urban, nice little hesitation in the air. He got his seventh point. Well, since Duke Cruz returned for Tennessee, the last five games, they have really done better on the boards, out rebounding their opponents by over six a game. As Bruce Pearl clears his bench. Tanner Wild is also on the floor. Rick Daniels Mulholland. Quinn Can Cannington. And Duke Cruz stays out there. Impressive victory tonight by the Volunteers. Playing about as well as uh, anybody in the country in recent games. I think they're deserving of the number four ranking. I, I just, uh, I think they're going to be any any team that shows up against them is going to have great difficulty in playing them. 
Rick Daniels Mulholland, the junior from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, missing the free throw. As Daniels Mulholland gets his name into the scorebook. Hunter for three. He's hit two of those tonight. Not unusual to see him shoot out there. He's pretty good for that range, and as you indicated, already two tonight. Arkansas has Nate Rakestraw out there for the first time, freshman. Cruz. 11 points, 11 rebounds for Duke Cruz. Cruz with his second double double of the season and the fifth of his career. Tom, you're talking about Tennessee going to Georgia this weekend. They've got a uh, matchup with Auburn at home next week, and then they've got that big game at Memphis a week from this coming Saturday. Final seconds. And Welch will be uh, tagged with a foul with 3.6 on the clock and will foul out of the game. They'll give Wild a chance to get into the scorebook. And Tennessee winning its 29th straight here at Thompson Bowling Arena. To the line, Tanner Wild for two. 67 wins in three seasons. Tying Jerry Green as Bruce Pearl looked at that graphic when he was talking to us earlier. He said, yeah, but didn't Jerry Green get fired? <laughs> he did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> he said something to us. He says, can we change that graphic? <laughs> He's got it rolling now, though. His balls are uh, playing really well. Another impressive victory chalked up here tonight. And cooling off a hard Arkansas team, which came in having won four in a row themselves. Hunter nearly hit one from backcourt. Bruce Pearl and John Pelfrey, and only lost two. One of those was to Arkansas, but they have now won 29 in the straights, 29 straight games here at Thompson Bowling Arena. They go to 22 and two on the season, nine and one with the best record in the Southeastern Conference, while Arkansas falls to 17 and six, now six and three in SEC play. Arkansas travels to meet Mississippi State on Saturday, while Tennessee will be at Georgia. Tennessee did everything well tonight as they beat the Arkansas Razorbacks. Tom Hammond for Larry Conley saying so long from Knoxville. You've been watching Raycom SEC Basketball. Welcome back to Gainesville, Florida. We're just about set for the old center. Here's a buzz. Florida hosting the Georgia Bulldogs. Here are the starting lineups for this afternoon. Fourth-ranked Tennessee Vols making their grand entrance here at Thompson Bowling Arena, much to the delight of the Rocky Top Rowdies, as Thompson Bowling Arena hosts our Recom all tell game tonight. Arkansas against Tennessee. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knoxville. Tom Hammond here for this good matchup. And, of course, uh, Tennessee with the best record in the SEC. They've lost only once in conference play, ranked fourth in the nation, unbeaten at home, and atop the SEC East. Arkansas has lost only twice in SEC play. They're just a half game out of first place in the West, just behind Mississippi State. Larry Connie is here for the color commentary, and Arkansas comes in as a hot team, Larry, with a, a hot duo at the moment in Patrick Beverly and Sonny Weems. Tom, I don't think there's a duo anywhere in the Southeastern Conference that's played any better or any more consistently than these two guys have. They really have to step up big here tonight. They have to have their scoring. They've got to have their rebounding. These are two outstanding players. And while I say that about this Arkansas squad, the dynamic duo on the other side is part of that long-range bomb squad that they've got. Nothing but threes raining in, and these are the two guys that lead them. And I think they've had terrific years, particularly Chris Lofton, in the last couple of weeks. Well, both teams should be running up and down the court at will tonight. Uh, what do you see as the Pontiac keys to the game? Well, it seems like every time we talk about a team playing Tennessee, they've got to be able to handle the pressure, and I think Arkansas has to do that again here tonight with their guard play out front. 
I think for Tennessee, I know Smokey will be happy about this. Three dog night. They got a lot of threes they throw in from around here, and I think Smokey will be watching them. All right. We're on Rocky Top tonight, and something's got to give. Arkansas comes in. They've won four in a row facing the Tennessee Balls, winners of their last five. Open oh, yeah. coming up. By Advance Auto Parts. By Charles Schwab. And by Pontiac. We're back in Knoxville. That's a look at the Pratt Pavilion, which is the uh, practice facility for the Tennessee basketball team, built as part of the renovations of Thompson Bowling Arena that took place in the offseason. And inside Thompson Bowling, ready to go with Arkansas and Tennessee. Take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the visiting Razorbacks with Stephen Hill, the big man anchoring the middle at seven foot with Weems, Washington, Welsh, and Beverly. And Tennessee, Tyler Smith averaging 15 points a game the last five. Wayne Chisholm, Jawan Smith, the hero of the LSU game, a steal and layup to win it. Chris Lofton, SEC Player of the Week for the seventh time in his career. That's an SEC record. And Ramar Smith. And John Pelfrey makes his first visit as the Arkansas head coach in the Thompson Bowling Arena. And Bruce Pearl is in his third season as the Tennessee head coach. Tennessee 21-2, ranked fourth in the nation. They've won 28 straight here at home. Look at the series record. Tennessee's won six of the last eight, but Arkansas, their last visit here, upset the then 10th-ranked Vols, 73-69 on February 25th, 2006. Officials for tonight's game, J.B. Caldwell, Bruce Benedict, and Pat Adams. Good matchup here tonight, Tom, and not, uh, I think he's had a great year. And again, the nice pass down inside and the good finish by Wayne Chisholm. Beverly picking up the quick foul in the first minute of the game, replaced by Gary Irvin. As Tyler Smith gets to the basket. And Tennessee's two for two. Maybe the first time this year that Tennessee has scored their first two baskets from inside the arc. So Irvin replacing Beverly early after Beverly picked up the first foul of the game inside the first minute of play. Hill with a screen for Welsh. Welsh tried to go under, no good. Hill with a follow, no good. And rebounded by Lofton. Tennessee, the highest scoring team in the Southeastern Conference. They love to get up and down. 83 7 a game as James, as a Chris Lofton was. Chris Lofton taken to the basket, and Tennessee has hit its first three attempts. He'll have to come all the way out beyond the three point line to get that pass. Good defense by Tennessee. And Stephen Hill called for swinging the elbows and knocking Chisholm to the court. Hill's first foul. Now, Tyler Smith right here. I think one of the leaders, really, and uh, one of the best players in the Southeastern Conference. And, of course, this guy, what a career he has had. Chris Lofton right up off of the glass. It's one thing he's done the last two years, Tom, is learn to take the ball to the basket and not just be a three-point threat. That was an added dimension to his game. I really saw it come to the fore last season. And Tennessee attacking the rim on all three other made shots. Not a three-point attempt yet. Lamar Smith, that's the first miss for the ball. It's Washington the board. Weems, open three. And an easy rebound for Jawan Smith. And Jawan, nobody stopped the ball, and one. One thing about Tennessee tonight, at least in the early going of this game, they are not looking for that three-point play. Arkansas giving them a lot of open lanes to the basket. Tennessee just laying it up right now. Michael Washington commits the foul. Lamar Smith on the bench. Tennessee's hit four of his first five shots. We're back in Knoxville. That's a look at the Pratt Pavilion, which is the uh, practice facility for the Tennessee basketball team, built as part of the renovations of Thompson Bowling Arena that took place in the offseason. 
And inside Thompson Bowling, ready to have a row, Arkansas, four straight. And after being batted around several times, Stefan Welch comes up with it for the Razorbacks. Half court defense for Tennessee and a man to man right now to start. Weems, Sonny Weems gets things started with a baseline jumper. Oh, what a terrific year he's having. We highlighted him at the top of the show. And Tennessee gets right to the rim to start things off for them. Wayne Chisholm. Jamar Smith on the bench. Tennessee's hit four of its first five shots without attempting a three so far. And here's Juwan Smith at the line. He's been suffering illness, a flu-like illness. In fact, at the LSU game, with two and a half minutes to go, Bruce Pearl asked him to go in the game. He said he couldn't go. Coach Pearl said, well, when you're ready, you just go on. So when he was ready, he left, didn't tell anybody, went into the game, made the steal and the layup that won it for the balls. In fact, that was his only basket of the night. Beverly is back. Almost lost it. Charles Thomas is on for Arkansas, 6'8", senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Beverly's floater no good, back rim. Arkansas has now missed four in a row. Good rebound by Howell that time. And Howell gets it back, gives it up to J.P. Prince. Tom, if you start listing the strengths of this Tennessee squad, depth has got to be one of the categories. Tyler Smith attempts and misses Tennessee's first three. Irvin nowhere to go left his feet and sailed it out of bounds Irvin out of control the second turnover by Arkansas Here's the steal Juwan Smith who just put himself in the game makes the steal makes the layup and Tennessee Wins the game over LSU on the road Juwan Smith missing that one Here's Irvin He'll shoot two free throws Log on to RaycomSports.com. Also actually got the starting nod away from Irvin about midway through the season. Irvin getting the start here tonight in Knoxville. Just missing two free throws, however. Juwan Smith sandwiched and fouled. Didn't seem pretty relentless at attacking the rim tonight. Somewhat uncharacteristic of uh, Tennessee for the most part this year. They, they kind of enjoy that mid-range, long-range three. And, of course, they lead the SEC in three-point field goals, averaging about 10 a game. And their attempts are almost like 70 more than the second team behind them. Arkansas foul was on Charles Thomas. As Jawan Smith hits the first. The second good as well. Biggest lead for the balls. Five points for Jawan Smith. And with the made free throw, they're able to set up that full court pressure. Irvin to Welch. Welch with a lob and a throw down by Towns. Oh, that was nice. Welch with a pretty pass, laid it up very easily. Anytime you get that kind of pass that close to the rim, you've got to be able to finish it. Darian Towns, the 6'10 senior from Alexandria, Virginia, averaging 11 points, five boards a game. Jawan Smith just lost it. I think I'd take my private jet to the SEC tournament. You wouldn't have far to go. You just live in Dunwoody, Georgia. <laughs> with a jet across town. Jet across town. <laughs> Arkansas hit its first two shots, but they're now three of seven, 43 percent. Tennessee's four of seven, 57 percent shooting. Arkansas has turned it over two times. Tennessee does not have a miscue, and each team 0 for one from the three-point arc. This catch on the inbounds play. By Duke Cruz is in the game. Cruz, you know, had the heart condition. Just returned on January 26 after missing nine games, being cleared to resume play. Fall away shot was short by J.P. Prince. Here comes Arkansas. Weems goes inside and Towns is fouled. On that list, he's fourth on the block shots list at 183. Nice career for the senior from Alexandria, Virginia. Good job by Irvin getting it across that screen to pick up Powell. Deflected out of bounds by Weems on the overplay defensively. Arkansas, Arkansas's defense the last two possessions has been much more aggressive. 
Chisholm hands to Lofton. Now Howell balances the floor. 2 3 zone by Arkansas. Howell for three. Beverly with an easy rebound. Beverly, the 10th leading rebounder in the SEC. Seven a game despite playing in the backcourt. Towns. Boy, what a nice lob that was down inside by Charles Thomas. Five for Towns and Arkansas back within two. Oregon really laying on Lofton. And then lost by Chisholm, the first Tennessee turnover. Arkansas a chance to tie the game or take the lead. Thomas missing the three. Howell with a pull up. It's no good from three point range. And Towns throws it right back to Howell. Heads up play that time. He jumped in front of Urban. And inside, Cruz from Lofton. <laughs> that time by Howell they figured he figured they were going to get the ball to Urban he just stepped in and grabbed it and got a basket from him. Thomas partially blocked Chisholm got a piece of it and takes down the rebound I think we have to worry about the shot clock tonight <laughs> don't say clock issues here in Knoxville <laughs> Lofton is fouled by Beverly. That's his second. And it comes with 13 and a half minutes remaining. Second foul on Patrick Beverly. John Pelfrey really angry over in front of the bench. Towns at Bruce Benedict. Now yeah, Towns with a nice catch right there. Look at Hal come up with that steal. Jump right in front of Irvin to get it. And then help this club get a basket on the nice pass on the inside to Duke Cruz. And Beverly goes out of the game with his second foul. That could be big for Arkansas. I doubt that he's going to get back in this game in the first half with those two fouls. Brian Williams was on for Tennessee. First time we've seen him. Lofton missing a three, but rebounded by Smith. Tyler Smith with a rebound. Brian Williams, 6'10", freshman from the Bronx, New York. Playing pretty well for Tennessee lately. Another three-point attempt. This one good. Jawan Smith. 1,200 career points now for Jawan. Meantime, Weems beats them back down court. Are they going to count the basket? They're yes. going to count it. Basket good and a Tennessee foul. It's on Ramar Smith. See the ball, Bruce Pearl says, as Weems beat the defense down court. It's one thing Arkansas does very well. They've got... Arkansas has been alternating between playing zone and playing man-to-man. -man. Looks like they're back in their man-to-man -man again. Williams wants it against Hill. Williams turns on Hill. Can't score. Slapped around. Still loose. And a rebounding foul will be called on Brian Williams of Tennessee. His first player of the year in the Southeastern Conference last year. Williams, a bad pass. Picked off by Jawan Smith. And then returning the favor and Weems with a lead pass for Irvin against Smith lays it up no good tapped up no good rebounded by Washington ball fake up and he'll shoot two fouled by Brian Williams. See you've got to play a lot of play. Yeah you do. You know because the way they press they can wear you down. Arkansas is deep enough they can go 11 12 maybe drops off talent wise after you hit eight. Smith and one. Tyler Smith got it in the lane, made a little hesitation move, and has a three-point opportunity. Tyler Smith, the transfer from Iowa, became eligible automatically. The NCAA giving him a waiver. His dad had been ill, and he was hoping that uh, he could come down to Knoxville. He's a Tennessee kid, hoping that his dad would have the chance to see him play, and unfortunately passed away before he had a chance to see him. Foul was on Marcus Britt as Tyler commits the three-point play. He had been on the uh, All Big Ten freshman team at Iowa and third team All Big Ten. But a nice addition for the Vols. Just a shame his dad didn't live long enough to see it. Here's Hill. Foul. 
Chisholm thought he got all ball, but he commits his first. Uh, Tom and I are not used to seeing as a Tennessee squad laying up instead of shooting threes. Nice move by Chisholm. Locked and followed it up with a, an easy layup. Here's Jawan Smith. All of this occurring in the first couple of minutes of play. And, of course, they get the ball one more time down inside the Duke Cruz. Tom, I'm just not used to seeing Tennessee shoot shots that close to the basket. Ball 7 of 15, 47% to open the game. 1 of 5 from three-point range. Turned it over two times. Arkansas 5 of 13, 38%. 0 of 2 from three-point land. They've turned it over four times. Arkansas winning the rebounding battle, 10-7. Stephen Hill short on his first attempt. Some other SEC scores. Georgia with a big lead on leading Florida 20 to 8. With Butch Pierre at the coaching helm for the Tigers. Well, LSU gave Tennessee all they wanted this past weekend, didn't they? They did. Right to the final bucket. Chisholm against Hill. Hill made him alter the shot, missed it, but tapped in on the board by Ramar Smith, his first two. Here's Welsh in a hurry, lob for Hill, nicely done. Arkansas has done that to Tennessee a couple of times so far in this first half, just beating the press with the dribble, and then the lob pass up in the air for the dunk. About the big fellow, the first man down court. Chisholm for three. How about the big fellow making the three? <laughs> Britt at the point now for the Razorbacks. And here's Weems. Got a screen from Hill. Hill rule, rolls to the basket. They just waited too long to spot him. He was open. Ten to shoot. Washington for three. Long rebound taken by Britt. And Arkansas has it back. Tonight's game featuring Arkansas, brought to you in part by the Arkansas Farm Bureau. They're having a hard time shaking Weems free. There's Weems for three, a rimmed out. Washington with another rebound. His fifth board of the first half. 63.9, Arkansas comes in. Sixth best free throw shooting team, 68.8. Razorbacks back into that 2-3 zone. Midway through the first half, Lofton penetrates. It came right to Ramar Smith. Hill made him change the shot. And then on the rebound, Cruz comes up with it and is fouled. Interesting to me that Tennessee continues to attack down inside, knowing that Stephen Hill, who's one of the best shot blockers in the conference, standing there waiting on them. But they've had some success, and it's one of the reasons they've got a six-point lead right now. Stephon Welsh committing the foul, and that's the seventh against Arkansas here in the first half. Cruz will have another. Stephen Hill ranks fourth in the conference in block shots. As Jarvis Bernardo leads the nation in block shots. He may lead the world. Hill closing in on Oliver Miller for the all-time Arkansas lead. He has 290, 55 behind Oliver. 26-18, biggest lead for the balls. Thomas in trouble. Lost it. Picked up by Weems. Weems attacks the rim and scores. Sonny Weems. Well, that's a nice play, and he got it up and around Cruz, too. Lamar Smith shot it over the basket, and Arkansas the other way. Good move by Gary Irvin. We've seen him at times over penetrate and give up that ball right there. Hesitation move, but nowhere to go with it under there, and he travels. Again, a poor decision by Gary Irvin. What was he going to do with it when he got it in there? Once again, take a look at here. Here's the maneuver down inside, and a pretty play, giving it, getting it inside and up off the glass as wings. Turnover situation. And Tennessee with a six-point lead. Tyler Smith cut off. Fall away shot again. Tom, for the one year that I have watched him play in the Southeastern Conference, he does that a lot. 
He penetrates about six to eight feet in front of that rim right there and just has that little fall away jump shot. He's very adept at it. He has five points as lost and swipes it from Towns. Lamar Smith travel. This is 20 turnovers a game against their opponents, and they are averaging 24 points a game off those 20 turnovers. If you're wondering why they're having so much success, a lot of it has to do with those turnovers and the points they're getting off of. Averaging 10 steals a game to Tennessee. Look at all the number ones there next to the categories in the SEC stats. Impressive. I'll tell you what, those assists actually lead the nation, not just the Southeastern Conference, but the nation. Tim, they are right at 19 assists a game. 2 3 zone again by Arkansas. Williams threw it right over the head of Howell. And Tennessee's fourth turn. But uh, Jack, jacket pocket there. He keeps pulling out, seeing what he wants to run here. It's almost like a football coach. You ever know football coaches always look at those charts? He needs to get him a laminated sheet like a yeah. football coach. <laughs> Maybe a wristband. <laughs> Weems, too hard off the glass. Lofton's third rebound. Lofton. Chased down by Smith, who saved it back to Lofton. Fell out of bounds. And then a uh, jump ball called. No, called timeout. They said Arkansas called a timeout, saving possession. So Arkansas's ball when we come back to Knoxville. There. And then everybody's trying to hustle into the corner to pick it up. And it looked like Charles Thomas came up with. I couldn't tell from there, Tom, if he was out of bounds with the ball or not. I don't think he was out of bounds. He was safely called a timeout. And it goes in the books, Larry, as uh, Tennessee's third straight turnover. Leaving the door open here for Arkansas with seven and a half minutes to go in the opening half. I think was expecting Weems to go back door and Weems just stopped. Tennessee leading Arkansas 28-22. As we look at the nation's power 25 presented by Q from Quaker State. Only two SEC teams currently in the top 25, but Tennessee with that gaudy number four national ranking. And Vanderbilt likely to move up after that whooping they gave Kentucky last night. Well, especially if they can beat uh, Florida on Saturday. So, Vandy with a little payback action. Kentucky handed them their first loss of the season at Rupp Arena, double overtime. And Florida beat them pretty soundly down at the O-Dome, so they have a chance to avenge that one on Saturday. And for Kentucky, their worst defeat ever in the Southeastern Conference. Ever. Did I say it was a whooping? Whooping was good. Term used in my part of the country. <laughs> Lofton penetrates, finds Howell for three. Williams able to save it. Did it uh, graze an Arkansas player? No. Arkansas ball. Good effort by Williams. He went into the Arkansas bench over there and probably wiped out about three players. Once I'm trying to come up with this ball right here, everybody trying to get out of his way. Traveling call and Tennessee will get it. I believe they, he ran the baseline, but you can't do it unless there's been a made basket. That's right. It, it is a fixed position out there. You can run after made field goals and made free throws. So a traveling call gets it back to Tennessee. Jordan Howell, by the way, 0 for 3 from three point land, and Tennessee's 2 of 7. And the ball is turned over again. It's a turnover fest in Knoxville. Yeah, the last two minutes, nobody seems to want to covet the basketball. This one looked like a field goal attempt. That was no good, I might add. Wide right. Jawan Smith losing the basketball for Tennessee. Both teams in the last two minutes have combined for seven turnovers. That's in two minutes. Fans want to run on Wells there for a travel, but no call. That's an illegal screen by Hill. Stephen Hill called for the illegal screen. That is an Arkansas turnover. So two and a half minutes and eight turnovers now. John Pelfrey upset with the fact that his postman couldn't get out there in time. 
You know what? I'm not sure. Hal tried to make a maneuver around Hill's screen out there. They're going to say he didn't have enough room to maneuver when the screen came up the backside. Number two on Hill. Remember, Arkansas has played most of this half without Patrick Beverly, maybe their best player, who picked up two real early fouls. Cruz, or Chisholm, and one. Chisholm fouled by Washington. And that's the second on Michael Washington. Great balance in this Tennessee attack right now. You've got the three-point threat coming for most everybody in this on this squad. But they can go down inside and get baskets from Chisholm. He and Cruz both very adept at catching and finishing inside. Washington goes out with two fouls, and Charles Thomas is in. Comes in. Chisholm goes to the bench for that three-point play after Tennessee had turned it over four in, of five possessions and score the first time in two minutes. There's a That's going to be three seconds. Three-second violation. Arkansas just can't stand uh, the turnovers. They continue to pile them up, and that's four in a row. Four turnovers in a row by Arkansas and nine in this first half with six and a half minutes left. Arkansas back into their man-to-man -man defense. Lofton's been kind of quiet tonight. Welch called for the foul. Number two on Welch as the Arkansas fouls continue to pile up. That was their tenth foul already here in the half. Tennessee will be shooting the double bonus the rest of the way. And this is the one guy you don't want to foul. Chris Lofton. Update those scores for you. That was Stephen Stephen Pearl. The lead Florida. Yeah, Stephen Pearl back in for Tennessee. And Lofton, the second best free throw shooter in the SEC, 86%. Knocks down two. He has four points in this first half. Meanwhile, four Arkansas players now have two fouls each. And the balls have their biggest lead. Welch. Timeout. Timeout. John Pelfrey. That prevented another Arkansas turnover. I think he looked up and saw that things were not going well on this half court offense. He wanted to make a change. Timeout on the floor as the teams discuss strategy. You should too. John Pelfrey is simply to try to get his uh, half court offense organized on their end. He looked up that time and saw that his guys were out of position and wanted to bring them together and say, now look, we've got to do some things right here. He's, he's talking to Gary Irvin right now, who's basically running the team out front. So Arkansas trying to make some adjustments against that Tennessee defense. Another uh, all-tell Raycom doubleheader coming away. Most of these stations on Saturday. It begins 1 o'clock Eastern as Kentucky, licking their wounds from Nashville, travels to Baton Rouge. Second game, you'll see either Florida Vanderbilt or Tennessee, Georgia. So you're going to head to Nashville this weekend, huh? Yeah, for the uh, be a good ball game. They're going to Athens. Arkansas, in the last three minutes and 40 seconds, has turned it over four times and missed their only shot. One of the reasons they're down, 33-22. Weems, quick shot. Wow. Sonny Weems. Love the way this guy plays. I mean, he's 6'6", a little over 200 pounds. He's got the range. He's got the quickness. He can handle it. Nine points for him in the first half. Here's a foul. One player with three and three others with two each. And 5.43 on the clock, first half. Jawan Smith with 10 points he is the leading scorer in the game. Skip pass. Hunter for three. Well, everybody getting into that. Vincent Hunter, the 6'10", senior from Little Rock. Only averages two a game. You know, Arkansas attempts the fewest threes of anybody in the conference. And they only make about five per game. Pearl feeds it back to Howell, who looks over at uh, the bench for instructions. With five minutes left in the half. Blocked. Arkansas has it. 
Blocked by Towns. Here's Weems spotted and hitting the three. I'll tell you what, now if he starts lighting it up for Arkansas, Tennessee could be in trouble. Jersey was retired. And of course has been a protege of Billy Donovan. First at Marshall, then at Florida. Arkansas back into that 2-3 zone. Bruce Pearl's going to attack it with that right there. That's easy for Jawan Smith. Long range two, but he has a dozen points. Help defense. Anytime you see a zone defense thrown up and it's been man-to-man -man the last four trips, you got your club ready to play. Jawan Smith right there on the baseline, realizing it's a zone, had nowhere to take it, so he pumped up that mid-range jump shot. No foul, just Tennessee out of bounds, so Arkansas gets it back. 420, first half. Weems gets it to Towns, and he's fouled. No good by Towns, who waited in and got the rebound and scored. Well, what a weapon to have a guy 6'10 that comes off the bench and plays like that. Past the four minute mark, Tennessee's lead is five. Ramar Smith. Hunter and Towns converged on him. And the foul on Hunter, his first hard fought game here on Rocky Top tonight. The balls have led throughout most of the first half. Arena. Two ties, one lead change. Tennessee's largest lead has been 11. Right now they're up by five with three minutes 52 to go in the first half. It's also amazing to me that Arkansas has been able to do this with Patrick Beverly spending all those minutes over on the bench next to John Pelfrey. Beverly, if I recall, picked up his second foul with about uh, 17 and a half minutes to go. Update on those scores. Georgia over the Gamecocks. LSU still on top of Florida. That's a halftime score. And Duke leading Maryland. Indiana and Wisconsin in a tight one. Missed a free throw. They're 12 of 12. Now 13 of 13. comes that pressure. Irvin's out in front. And he's fouled. That was going to be interesting, but, but the Tennessee foul makes it a moot point. It's on tab. That's his first point. Cuts the Tennessee lead back to five. Lofton with a screen from Tyler Smith, but no shot there. Good defense by Irvin. That's an offensive foul on Tyler Smith. That's his second. For the Toyota Info Center. John Pelfrey's gone with Gary Irvin a lot tonight in this basketball game, probably because of that pressure that Tennessee likes to apply. And Welsh in foul trouble. Weems lost the ball. I mean, uh, Towns lost the ball, but it came to Weems. Then Britt misses the three. Nobody there. Irvin is one on three. And again, one on three, bailed out for the foul. Hard head. Arkansas's battled back to only trail by four now. Lofton off the screen. Irvin right with him. Irvin has done a good job defensively. Powell sets it up. High pick and roll for Lofton. Gave it to Jamar Smith for three. I'm going to tell you something. That is some duo they've got. We talked about the top of the show. Jawan Smith and Chris Lofton. Two guys that uh, rain threes. Jawan, we asked him how he was feeling before the game. He said, well, still a little sick, but uh, ready to go. And he was. He has 15 points. He has an answering three. Rains down from Sonny Weems. Weems has 15, matching Jawan Smith's total. Here's Smith again. Reverse, no good. Thomas hands it up to Britt. 
Boy, Irvin had leaked out and was on his way to the other end, but it was obviously they didn't want to make the pass. A chance now to really close this gap, only by down by four. Ragged ball handling by Arkansas. Nearly lost it a couple of times, but retained possession. Jawan Smith, one of that uh, great duo of long-range shooters. They've got a number of good shooters on this Tennessee squad, but he can nail it as, as can Sonny Weems, right? That's going to be a hold. Tennessee with the ball, up three. Orban's oh, really made it tough on Lofton. Good screen. Chisholm fouled by Towns. Number one on Darien. Tennessee by four. Towns had to come out to get it just as Weems was trying to do an entry pass. Here's Weems spotted for three. No good. Good block off by Cruz and over the back Towns number two. Second free throw. 27 total fouls in this first half. Inside the final minutes. Weems got a little bump. Looking for some help. Hunter came to get it. Ten to shoot. Five to shoot. Runner by Britt. No good. Weems had it. And Arkansas controls. Shot clock is off. That was the first time the shot clock had been under five seconds all night. Palfrey doing some good coaching, stopping that foot over there to get his team's attention. They all turned around and looked, and they're going to hold the ball for the last shot, hopefully for the first half anyway. On its way, Britt. No good. Pearl with a rebound as the first half comes to a close. Foul filled the first half at Thompson Bowling Arena. Both teams shooting 46%. Weems and Jamar Smith matching point totals at 15 each. And here at intermission, Tennessee with the lead, 43-38 over Arkansas. SEC basketball is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Sports.com for your chance to win. Tennessee led by as many as 11 during that first half. They were in command most of the way, but with so many fouls being called, really hard to get into a rhythm for either team. Yeah, it really was. I mean, and, and the fact that Arkansas is leading Tennessee in rebounding right now kind of amazed me, too. But, you know, the fact that Tennessee's pressure has always been tough on teams coming in here, but Arkansas, for the most part, has handled it. Uh, Tennessee right now not doing as well on the defensive end. Juwan Smith and uh, Sonny Weems played to a standoff in that first half with 15 points each. Well, Juwan Smith really got it going. And here's a nice pass by Chris Lofton on the assist. The bounce out. He gets it and drills it. And, of course, Sonny Weems, who had 15 in that first half, along with Juwan Smith. Both these guys are the leaders on the outside, I think, of their respective clubs. Throw Lofton in there for Tennessee to help. And how about Arkansas getting all this done without Beverly? Beverly with uh, two quick fouls and uh, played minimal minutes in that first half as we look at our advanced auto parts drive to the SEC championship standings. Tennessee alone atop the East with an eight and one record. Florida and Kentucky now at six and three and Vandy six and four. And the Western Division is a little bit of a change. You can see Mississippi State with that half game lead over Arkansas right now. Ole Miss still uh, hanging around in that upper division. Auburn, Alabama, and LSU in the lower part of the Western Division. And Arkansas goes to Starkville this weekend. We're at halftime in Knoxville at the moment. Halftime entertainment is tonight in Knoxville. And inside Thompson Bowling Arena, Tennessee with a 43-38 lead as we start the second half. Weems and Jamar Smith. Jawan Smith playing a uh, standoff in that first half with 15 points each. 
Arkansas will start Gary Irvin in the second half in place of Stefan Welch. Be along with Beverly, Washington, Hill, and Weems. And uh, Tyler Smith, Lamar Smith, Jawan Smith, Chris Lofton, Wayne Chisholm are the starters, the original starters for Tennessee. It will be interesting to see how Beverly responds there after seeing over there the entire first, or nearly the entire first half, only four minutes of play. Chisholm misfires on a three to open the second half. Tennessee back in their man-to-man -man defense. Arkansas having to come way out to get the ball. Weems shoots over Lofton. Kicks high right to Washington. He brought it down there where the little guys could get it. And Chisholm, who's not a little guy, but he did get it. <laughs> Juwan Smith. Point three. How about Chisholm? Reaches down there and gives it to Tennessee. Steals it. And one. Tyler Smith. Tom, that is really a breakdown in concentration on the part of Arkansas. I mean, once the basket is made, you've got to get the ball out of bounds and then do something with it after you get it. Chisholm with a great pass to the left side to Juwan Smith, and he's going to make that one most of the time. And Tyler Smith with a three-point opportunity. Michael Washington goes out of the game now, committing two fatal mistakes there. One was... Bringing that offensive rebound down around his knees where everybody could get it as you see the extensive foul trouble and the other then was the lapse of concentration as you said the Tennessee opens the second half with a pair of three point plays to match their biggest lead. Here comes that pressure from Tennessee. Thomas made the catch. And Irvin brings it into front court. If you play Tennessee or you watch them during the year, you know that they really put the pressure on, really face guarding the guy trying to get to the ball. Then once it comes in, they simply back off. Skip pass to Beverly. Three-pointer short. Doesn't have his legs. He hasn't been out there much tonight. Juwan Smith with a lob off the break. And they turn it over. Lobbed it for Tyler Smith, who went up into row six of the Rocky Top Rowdies. <laughs> Here's the lob right here. You know what? It was a pretty good pass. He just fumbled the basketball. He holds on to it. He's got a basket. Urban threading his way around defenders. Back to the rim. And was fouled. Tyler Smith snags the rebound. He has four. Bush Pierre's making it tough on folks, isn't he? Yeah, almost beat Tennessee and right now leads Florida. Chris Lofton double teamed in the corner. Jawan Smith for three. He's feeling it tonight. He's four for four behind the three point arc and has 21 points. Oh, what a great compliment he is to Lofton from beyond that three point line. You can't just concentrate on one of the two. You've got to look out for both of them. Well, Beverly might have carried the ball. All the way shot, no good by Weems. Ramar Smith to Tyler Smith, and he'll shoot two. That was great passing by the balls that time. Ramar Smith down underneath. Go back and take a look at the early one here. Anytime you get the ball to Jawan Smith in that position, it is money. Already two three-point field goals in the second half. And Stephen Hill has just committed his third foul for Arkansas as we take a break. 17.30 left. The new practice facility for men and women, Pratt Pavilion. Scoreboard, a $3 million scoreboard and concourse refurbishments. Did a beautiful job on the, the refurbishment of Thompson Bowling Arena. And uh, have had a season to match it, unbeaten here at home, and ranked fourth in the nation, the best record in the Southeastern Conference. You'd be hard-pressed to find a better playing facility on campus than what Tennessee has right here. Only two teams in the Southeastern Conference are still unbeaten at home. Tennessee being one, as you indicated. The other was Vanderbilt. And 
Vandy uh, a la last night against Kentucky looking for a little payback. They'll host Florida on Saturday as Tyler Smith hits the first free throw. There's uh, John Pelfrey studying his notes again. And Call to play after looking at those notes. Arkansas has missed their first three shots to open the second half. He needs some 12 point plays right now. Weems brings it up court, hands to Irvin. Thomas with a screen. Weems gives it back to him. And he scores. Charles Thomas. Nice move by Thomas. Both these clubs like to run a lot of high pick and roll. In fact, I see that a lot in the Southeastern Conference. A lot of teams like to use that. You've got good three point shooters. You must come out and challenge that man who's coming off of that screen. And both of these clubs have that. Ramar Smith with 10 to shoot. Lofton. Tyler Smith leaves nicely in the basket. Good by Chisholm. One of the many assets that I think he has. I think Tyler Smith is one of the more rounded, best rounded players in the Southeastern Conference. Thomas muscled it up and drew the foul. Six rebounds, but that's not his strength. I think his real strength is passing the basketball. When he gets it in that lane right there, if he'll make a maneuver and get open, he'll find you. Wayne Chisholm committing his third foul. Available tonight. And Jordan Howell in the front court for the balls. They lead it 56-43. Good baseline screen that time down underneath to try to free Cruz. Jordan Howe, very, very experienced at that guard position out there running the club. Tyler Smith shoots over Thomas. Rebounded by Weems. Weems pull up short. And a push in the back, it appeared. Yeah, on Tennessee. To Jawan Smith had kind of led the way. Tom, watch his preparation in his three-point shooting. Do you ever see the ball hit the deck? That's the second one. Look at the third one. Good balance, good follow through. Four three point field goals were showing you, and none of them, none of them where the ball was hitting the deck. Juwan with 21 points on six of eight shooting, four for four behind the three point arc. And Tennessee opens the second half by hitting four of their first six shots, while Arkansas could manage only one of five. I love the way the guy prepares to shoot the ball. I mean, you know, you get the ball to him, he's, got, he's balanced. Got his hands ready. He's got his feet ready. Just catches it and goes straight up. There's that disparity in shooting we talked about. That'll help. That's a high percentage one. Bat Towns jams at home. He has double figures. Tennessee spreading the floor right now. A little bit of a dribble outside. Dribble weave outside. Good move by Tyler Smith. And he got it. He has 14. He's one of those guys you look up into the night. He's got 14 to 18. He's got six or seven rebounds. He's got four or five assists. There's a little bit of everything to this Tennessee squad. Thomas, nowhere to go. Found Wells for three. Batted around a couple times, still on the floor. Picked up by Towns. His shot off glass. Good. Darian Towns. Well, that's a nice spin move right there by Towns. Kind of a battle going on inside, too, among the Arkansas and Tennessee inside players. A dozen points for Towns. Jawan Smith, a rare miss tonight. And a tie up on the rebound. Possession arrow to Arkansas. He's pointing to the. Let's go back and look at one of the best substitutes coming off the uh, Arkansas head possession out of bounds because we give the ball to Tennessee when possession arrow was uh, in favor of Arkansas. Chisholm trying to clear everybody out. He'll shoot two, fouled by Thomas. His second. 
as much as we talk about what they do for me on that three-point arm. This is a basketball team that's got an inside presence, too. They can get the ball down in there. And Chisholm is one of those guys they try to go to as often as they can. Here's the free throw shooting that you indicated in the first half that Tennessee has struggled with. Yeah, not tonight. Nope, not tonight. And Chisholm is full for five, who normally struggles there. He has 13 points. Thomas blocked by Williams. Thomas triggers it into Beverly what blocked by Chisholm. Oh, how about that block by Chisholm? Lofton. He's having a tough night shooting. Weems takes it the other way. Beverly spotted for the three, and he hits it. Three-pointer Patrick Beverly, his first basket of the night. An attempt, four points for Chris Lofton. Lofton for three. And that's Williams over the back for the Tennessee foul. Third foul for Tennessee. Arkansas looking to get it back down to single digits. Here's a man that can do it if he gets hot. Patrick Beverly, pick and roll. Washington moved it to Welsh. Around the horn it goes. Finally, a fall away by Towns. Got a good shot, but it wouldn't go. Pull up shot on its way and a brick from JP Prince. Beverly leads the break. And Towns fouled by Prince, his third. Arkansas with numbers. And the Tennessee foul. Arkansas on the break right here. It's kind of funny, actually, to watch Darian Towns trying to avoid the foul, and he just carried the ball about eight steps. Like a fullback uh, going yeah. through the line. That was the fifth team foul against Tennessee. And another odd play, trying to dribble right around a player. Beverly got it up no good. Washington's foul not there. And cleared by Chisholm. Lamar Smith. Williams had a trouble getting control. But once he did, he put it home his first basket. Not bad for a guy who never played high school basketball. Went on the prep circuit, but never played high school ball. Watch this maneuver right here. Williams trying to come up with the ball, fumbled it, and still held onto it long enough to get control of it and get it up off the glass. However, that back down court on the Arkansas end, he commits his fourth foul. Patrick Beverly will step to the line for the first time tonight. Double doubles in all those games. He's had four double doubles on the season. Arkansas goes back into a 2 3 zone. Touch pass to Tyler Smith. Can't score. But an Arkansas blocking foul on Welch to 250. Thomas rebounds the miss. Arkansas with the ball, trailing by 11. Charles Thomas with a collision and an offensive foul. And a hop that might get him teed up. It is. There it is. I think that's going to go to the bench. Watching J.B. Caldwell, he didn't point to the player, Thomas. He pointed to John Pelfrey. Let's go back and see what caused Pelfrey to get his foul or technical foul. JB Caldwell underneath there calling it. Thomas vociferously disagreed, as did Pelfrey. And it is the Arkansas bench assess the team. Lawan Smith. 
Well, it could have gone either way. That little hop uh, was, <laughs> was certainly got JB's attention, and then uh, Pelfrey's verbal outburst cost him a tee. Comes with 12 minutes left in the game, and Tennessee with the ball up 64 52. Beverly's got Ramar Smith out front. Left open, three pointer no good by Tyler Smith. Here comes Arkansas. Hogs need a bucket. Hill rolled to the basket, nobody within five feet of him, and they waited way too long. Cruz recovered to deflect it. Lofton, runner, good. How about Chris Lofton passed up a three to take the ball to the rim? Arkansas left it open for him and a little teardrop about six feet out. Lofton six points, that's ten below his average. But uh, Arkansas had a sure bucket with Hill and they just waited, 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 didn't have their head up and ended up throwing it away. Hunter doesn't know what to do with it, finally gives it to Welsh. He knows what to do with it. Penetrates. Might have been a travel as he slid. Here's Beverly. Fall away. Tough shot. Rebound on the fly by Lofton. Whips it over to Jawan Smith. That's a blocking foul on Arkansas. Beverly commits number three. Here's Chris Lofton. Tennessee in front. 66-52, just about the midway point of the second half. Let's take a look and see what the officials were looking at while we were while we were at break. I think they were wondering about the continuation. They're going to call a blocking foul, but was he in the act of shooting when he made that turn? And they ruled he was. Basket good. You get that call in the NBA. I very seldom see it in the college ranks. Well, while we have a moment, we remind you of the doubleheader coming your way on most of these Alltel Raycom stations. After review on the prior play, basket credited to Lamar Smith. So the basket was good by Lamar Smith, and Tennessee has its biggest lead, and Lamar Smith with a chance to add to it. With the free throw, which is good. And enables him to set up their full court pressure. Hill. And there's a steal as Hill was calling for the ball at seven foot. Then Hill with a block and a foul. Stephen Hill, number four. Arkansas has turned it over three of their last four possessions. And how many Arkansas turnovers for the game now? 16. Well, at that time, you can see really the Tennessee press at work. I mean, that's what they do so very well. They really deny the inbound pass. Once the ball is in the hands of the guy out of bounds, everybody else just face guards and denies the guy to break to the ball. And they got the turnover. Juwan Smith with 22 points, misses that free throw. Brian Williams has four for Tennessee. Let's see if Arkansas handles it a little bit better this time. Beverly gets it to Welsh, and Tennessee falls back into the half-court defense. Sonny Williams came up short. Nice rebound by Cruz. Tennessee in a hurry. Jawan Smith, long three. No, yes, good. I thought I was going to fly out of there. And like I said, he's feeling it tonight. Don't doubt him when he is in that zone. That ball just kind of crept in the side. It didn't go in, go in very cleanly, but hey, it's three. Good screen and roll by Hill. But the pass was off the mark, and Arkansas turns it over. Well, and all of a sudden, Tennessee has built a 21 point lead. You know, they can do that to you. You and I were talking about the Tennessee Florida game earlier when Florida really made a run at them and got ahead of them. And then Tennessee just 
slap that press on there, and all of a sudden you look up, and Tennessee's got a 10 point lead and stretching. And when you play at this pace, it plays right into Tennessee's hands. Of course, that's the way that Florida and Arkansas like to play, and you can't ask them to do something they're not accustomed to doing, I suppose. But step back. Jalon Smith can't hit. Missed by Ramar Smith. Irvin to Beverly. Well, Arkansas having a difficult time inbounding the ball inside to the, in the uh, players in the paint. Weaves under pressure came out. Lamar Smith. Jawan Smith for three. Are you kidding me? He was just about in Bruce Pearl's lap. Now Jawan Smith, as Tom indicated, really feeling it tonight. Good pass on the other side over there by Ramar Smith, and Jawan is nailing nothing but threes. He is six for six from the arc and has 29 points. With time out on the floor, the teams discuss strategy. You should too. See, all you got to do is stand in that huddle and just look at Jawan Smith, and Bruce Pearl's got to feel awfully good. He's got a big smile on his face over there. Tennessee jumped all over Arkansas to start this second half, and they haven't looked back yet. Jawan Smith has scored the last seven points for Tennessee. And as we indicated, has not missed from three-point range tonight. Six for six. And 29 points. Jawan coming off the game-winning steal and layup against LSU. His only basket that game. A little under the weather. And uh, feeling pretty good tonight, I would say. Juwan uh, with 29 points, had 23 against Florida, 22 against Alabama, but 29 tonight. Meanwhile, over the last five minutes, Arkansas has turned it over four times and missed six shots. Tennessee has taken full advantage of that. Tough pass picked up on the rebound by Weems. 17 for Sonny. And that'll be the Weems foul on the other end. Now Sonny Weems hustling back on defense, trying to deny this pass, and he just slant, simply ran into Jawan Smith there in front of the Tennessee bench. Tom, I was talking earlier about the fact that when you've got two players the caliber of a Chris Lofton and a Jawan Smith that can shoot the ball the way they can from beyond that arc, it really helps the other players on the Tennessee team. Chisholm's going to get a lot more looks down inside, as will Cruz. And, of course, Tyler Smith can go either way. He could go out and shoot the three-point field goal, or he can go down inside. And also the mid-range game. Jawan with his 30th point. His career high, 32 against Middle Tennessee. November of 07. Can't hit it, but got his own rebound. Fed it inside and missed shot by Towns. Everything going wrong for Arkansas here in the last few minutes. Close to an offensive goal, Tim, but no call. Tapped in I'm by sure Tab. Was it Tab? Yeah. Weems with an open three, and he knocks it down. Sonny Weems. Hits the three. He has 20 points to lead the Arkansas attack. And the Razorbacks will take a timeout. Well, Tom, Tennessee's been playing like this all season long. I mean, when they've gotten themselves in trouble, it's because their three-point shooting will break down. Go back and check their stats. But, I mean, they've only lost two games this year, one to Kentucky and Lexington, the other one went to Texas. And uh, since that loss at Rupp Arena, they have been uh, playing at the top of their game, looking good and on the verge of winning their sixth straight game. 
Next Wednesday, we'll have a split these nations. Well, without Sonny Weems, Arkansas would be in even deeper trouble than they are. Weems, 8 of 17. The rest of the team is only 10 of 31. Well, the problem is he has not had the complimentary scoring of Patrick Beverly to help him tonight. And really, Arkansas has not taken very good care of the basketball. The turnovers have really hurt them. And to Tennessee's credit, they've been able to take those turnovers and convert them to Tennessee points. Beverly in early foul trouble has only five tonight. And we invite you to log on to Raycom. Tennessee moving the ball extremely well. And content to work a little clock. Travel on Tyler Smith. Seven minutes, ten seconds left. It's the ninth Tennessee turnover, but the balls still have the lead. of his leg there as if he were injured on this last play. Yeah, Tom, watch this maneuver. He tried to turn to come back out. He traveled with the basketball. He reached back like he was grabbing his hamstring. I, I don't want to just suppose that that was the injury, but uh, he certainly is injured. He's over on that bench right now being intended to. He's had a nice game tonight, as you see. Like I said, he shows up every night. He gets 14 to 18 points. He'll get six to eight rebounds. He'll have four or five assists. Right now he's trying to get that leg taken care of for assists tonight. Hard for uh, Arkansas to penetrate this Tennessee defense. They're doing a nice job of keep them, keeping them out of the paint. Towns. Floor picked up by Cruz. Nine rebounds by Duke Cruz. Juwan Smith has not missed. The rest of the team is sputtering from that three point arc. All that's going to show in the morning. Team for Tennessee, seven out of 15. <laughs> well, he has had a good night, though. Just two shy of his career high, 32. Thomas and Chisholm with a wrestling match. Thomas tagged with a foul. And that's his fifth as he walks over to the bench. Thomas. Leaves with six points and five rebounds. Thomas is fifth personal foul. And replaced by another man playing with four, Michael Washington. Okay, Arkansas got themselves into trouble in the first half with uh, a lot of guys with two and three fouls. And Thomas the first to exit so far for the Razorbacks. So LSU did in fact whip the Gators at the O-Dome tonight. Chisholm scores. Bruce Pearl and the balls have been true to form tonight though. Favored coming in to win their sixth straight and leading almost the entire game. Arkansas had a 4-2 lead early. Irvin for three. Lost out of bounds by Washington. It'll be Tennessee's ball. Well, Arkansas just had a difficult second half. They have not been able to get good looks at the basket. They've turned the ball over. Tennessee has just pounced on them. Pretty amazing that uh, Tennessee's done all this, all the fireworks, without Chris Lawton having a big night. Mm -hmm. Says a lot about this team, though, don't yeah. you think, Tom? Bruce Pearl said, you know, Used to be if Chris Lofton took a bad shot, it was a good shot for us. Now if he takes a bad shot, it's not so good because we have lots of other capable players like Duke Cruz. Well, to Bruce Pearl and his staff, credit goes to them for going out and getting players to put around Lofton, who remains, I think, one of the best players in the Southeastern Conference. Just really in about the last three weeks has really turned it on. The shooting has improved and November and December were not good months for him. So he's got another put back off the loft of this. So nine points and ten rebounds for Duke Cruz. Nice addition to the Tennessee uh, roster. Returning, as we indicated earlier, January 26th after missing nine games with a heart condition and cleared the play. 
Once again, watch Cruz maneuver down inside. A little turn to the inside and stretched out. Here's Cruz again using that big, strong body of his inside against Arkansas. And then Duke committing the foul, putting Michael Washington at the line. Nasty. Okay, I'll put Cruz in that category. I mean, he's one of those guys, and I think every team needs somebody like that. He'll go in there and he'll battle. I mean, he just goes in against anybody bigger or even stronger. And he'll go in there and, you know, and that gets everybody else kind of charged up, too. Tyler's one replaces Duke Cruz. I don't even know I just called him mean and nasty, though. I, I'll go hide for that. <laughs> Tennessee turns it over against the Arkansas press. It's a good night for the Volunteers. It looks like they're going to maintain their leadership position in the Southeastern Conference. Welsh blocked by Chisholm. His second block of the night. Howell for three. His first field goal of the night. He's been 0 for 2 against Florida and 0 for 4 against LSU. All of them three point attempts. And just one of seven tonight. Three pointer from Welsh is good. Lofton, three pointer, no good. Been that kind of night for Chris, but Jawan Smith. Puts in his 32nd point to tie his career high. And he did it off the offensive glass. It's an interesting shot, wasn't it? He was facing out instead of facing the basket. He still got it off the glass. Nice pass. Tennessee push under the basket. And Tennessee in command. Oh.